because my little brother, in which we're doing this documentary for, Douglas Robinson, your death will not be in vain. And I love Doug. Doug loved me. Just being around him, he had a good spirit. He was a healing person. They are there. Get SROs back. When you give to the poor. Should not be forced out of their neighborhoods when it goes through a period of transformation. But there's a long tradition of these types of uh, uh, voices of conscience. Um, so I just immersed myself in the world of St. Sabina and, and spent time with Father Mike and, and his peacekeepers and the community there and tried to learn as much as I could. We love you on Windy City Live. Yes, we do. Tell us, how did all this ha happen? How did this come about? Well, I play me. I play Val Warner in Chirac, which is really cool. So when people see this movie, they are literally seeing Val, and I am a reporter in the movie. We talk about the violence, but what can we do personally? I think we got to be engaged, and I think engaged in a number of things. In our block, in our home, in our neighborhood, we got to be engaged. We got to fight the issues. We got to fight a government that is abandoned, you know, whole communities on the south and the west side. Um, we got to fight a governor who's cut out every youth employment program, who's cut out violence prevention programs, who's abandoned um, our communities and the poor and the vulnerable. And I think we got to reach out to our brothers on the street and love them and respect them and help them, not just demonize them. My participation is only because of Mr. Spike Lee, our leader, our director, and uh, he reached out to me and blessed me with the opportunity to be in this film and said that his mission was to save lives in the south side of Chicago. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll just say, like, first of all, give you the history of coming to Chicago and telling my jokes as a, as a young cat. I'm 37 now. I started about almost 15 years ago. Elroy taking me under his wing, let me do some jokes here and there for the radio stations and all that kind of stuff. More than that, we are more than that. We're greater than that, and I feel like in places like this, or Chicago, or whatever you want to call it, the hood, whatever you want to call it, like it's too much attention dwelled on the negative. I learned that no matter what you do and how much of a genuine heart you have, and if you're coming from a good place, people are going to criticize if they don't agree with what you're doing. Hi, we're from Empire, and you're watching. So how long have you been standing here? Not too long, like an hour. So this, we're moving in fast. This is a good sign. Yo, what's up? It's your man Tony Schofield from 106.3 Chicago's R&B, and you are watching Men on Higher Learning. Now, I used to hang around with some men that was into some higher learning. It just wasn't that kind of higher learning, but I got myself together now, okay? What is it that you do in your quiet time, in your meditation time, that allows you to bring us the films that you do? I sit courtside the Mass Square Garden, world's most famous arena.
to CTV on the Higher Learning Network. Yeah, right. Back up just a little bit. You answered a question that I was going to ask, mm -hmm. but in your explanation, you explained it. So I'm going to let the, the viewers in on this. We had a prior conversation about me not understanding why women who dress like men and act like men, and then they get in a relationship with a woman and they act like a man. So I'm, I'm not understanding this at all. If you are a woman, dressed as a man mm -hmm. and you like women, mm -hmm. why are you dressing as a man if you don't like men? I don't understand that and you just explained that to me. And so for those of you who may have missed it, you need to hear this again. And the reason why is because. So one, it gives you power when you're a male. Mm -hmm. And that's what that whole thing was about, power and mm -hmm. control. Mm -hmm. But here's the tricky part to that. I, I know that I was not born a lesbian, okay? First of all, it's a learned behavior. Mm -hmm. I didn't come here performing oral sex mm -hmm. on anybody, mm -hmm. anal sex on anybody, mm -hmm. foreplaying on anybody. Mm -hmm. I didn't come here doing that. I learned, mm -hmm. I was taught was how behavior. to do that. Mm -hmm. So it was a learned behavior. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, some um, might say, mm, okay, yeah, she's sitting here saying this, but listen, I walked on that side of the fence for 17 years, and while I was involved in a relationship with women, there would be times after we get through with our sexual encounter, and we hugging, and we caressing one another, and I'm crying, and she's like, baby, why are you crying? And I'm like, baby, listen, I love you. I don't want to never leave you. But on the inside, I was like, how did I get stuck like this? Lord, how did I get stuck like this? If you can get me out of this, Lord, I would never return back to this lifestyle again. And when was that? That was July 6, 1986. Mm. I have not laid with women since 1986. Mm. I do not practice nor do I live the lifestyle of a lesbian. Mm. Listen, I love them because I still have acquaintances that are out there, but I'm grateful for the change that God has done in my life. Why? Because I know without a shadow of a doubt mm -hmm. in that quiet time, because God, it's against, it's against God's word, right? Mm -hmm. And God is faithful. It is not his will that he want any man to perish and be lost mm -hmm. because of the sins and the acts, right? Mm -hmm. I know that God deal with them. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful that he took me out. I'm grateful that he took my mother out because why? We are living testimonies that God can change. Mm -hmm. And you're both in the church. In the same church, yes, working together in a ministry yes. in the yes. church. Yes. What does your church, because there are many churches that accept um, LBGT, transgender, gay, lesbian, accept that in the church. What is your take on that in the church? What does your church say about that? So, go ahead, Mother. Well, I'm like this. You know, I haven't been to many churches, mm -hmm. and this is the first I ever went to where I heard the actually bona fide truth. Now, if they're not preaching, teaching, living it, and enforcing the word of God, it's just a waste of time. Mm. You can stay at home, put on Jane Brown, <laughs> and he had a baby, whatever you want to call it, and, and uh, feel good. Mm -hmm. But when you can come and get your head knocked off mm. and put it back on mm. with love, mm. that's the right place. Mm. When okay. they're telling you that, hey, what you're doing out there is against the word of God. Mm -hmm. And if you don't want to believe what I'm saying, take your Bible. Mm. And if they can't prove it to you from the word of God, then you're in the wrong place. What portion would you say that there are, what number or percentage of women in your church, in your ministry that are gay or men that are gay? Let me, let, let me yeah, go ahead. <laughs> You, the reason why I would love to answer that because I don't want to just continue to um, label it because of homosexuality or lesbianism, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. An act is an act, right? Whether you be heterosexual, lesbian, homosexual, transgender, 
we're doing the same act, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, and the mm -hmm. same act is performing oral sex, mm -hmm. performing anal sex, mm -hmm. licking the toes, mm -hmm. sucking on the fingers, mm -hmm. on the neck, in the ears. Mm -hmm. It's the act, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we don't. I don't want to be confused about that. And when we talk about acceptance, I'm in a ministry where it accepts. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about acceptance, we're talking. About, we accept you to come in, but we know when you leave out, there's going to be a change. Be there's going to be a okay. difference. Okay. So we don't bang you beat you over the head mm -hmm. put you down mm -hmm. listen it was loving kindness that drew my mother it mm -hmm. was loving kindness that drew me mm -hmm. it took us sitting there listening to the word of god where he began to draw us yes. by love yes. mm -hmm. he drew us mm -hmm. he didn't talk about us he didn't put us down mm -hmm. all he did was broke down what sin was all mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. all he did was explain why i was shooting drugs mm -hmm. why i was hiding behind my pain mm -hmm. how did i get to that point in my life mm -hmm. because of it was all pain mm -hmm. that drove me mm -hmm. to that point mm -hmm. and so by the love of God being exhibited and telling me Denise listen you don't have to continue to live like this mm -hmm. you don't have to continue to do this listen God sent you here because he want to deliver you he want to save you and for me to realize that God wanted to do that for me because I was sick and tired of it anyway mm -hmm. see it's something about when you been involved in something it, when you done been down to the deep sea when mm -hmm. i'm talking about i'm talking about in the depths mm -hmm. and the cruddiness of oral sex the mm -hmm. cruddiness of anal sex and and you showed me that that was not what my mouth was made for mm -hmm. and my mouth was made to give god the glory All the praises right the mm -hmm. honor when mm -hmm. you wasn't there when i jumped through that window mm -hmm. received 183 stitches because i was living as a homosexual mm -hmm. as a full-blown lesbian you wasn't there when God spared my life. Mm -hmm. You wasn't there when he cleaned me up, when he mm -hmm. took the needles up out of my arm mm -hmm. and made me to be the woman that mm -hmm. I am today. Listen, I'm not confused at all about mm -hmm. what God delivered not me from. I'm excited about what he delivered mm -hmm. me from. And as I told you in my conversation, listen, I love every person that's living that same lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Because why? They don't know what I know. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, the preachers and the, and the, the teaching that they have gotten and they, they accept it. Mm -hmm. Listen, I meet them where they are because mm -hmm. I've been there. Mm -hmm. And I'm able to go back and tell them, listen, you know where God delivered us from. Mm -hmm. You saw us when we was out there pimping. Mm -hmm. You saw us when we were shooting dope. You mm -hmm. saw us when we were That's sticking right. up and burglarizing and snatching mm -hmm. persons. You saw this. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. saw us when we had the women. Mm -hmm. You saw everything that we had. And now you know that God has done something for us. You see the change that God has done in our life. I still receive phone calls right mm -hmm. now from some of the people that I was once in the streets with. Well, can you pray for me? Even in my play, I had a person who played DJ said, listen, I'm not going to be like this always. Sure do. Really? I'm not going to be like this always. So, yes, I do understand that how we can become comfortable with something. Mm -hmm. I understand how we take the norm and or I said we take the app norm to try to make it mm -hmm. normal. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's because the preachers are condoning it. Mm -hmm. See, me having a title as lesbian mm -hmm. or homosexual on me, that's not what's that's not the thing that God is concerned about. Mm -hmm. What God is concerned about is showing me about the sins that mm -hmm. I'm committing. Mm -hmm. It's the acts that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And see, all people have to do because they try to justify, minimize, and rationalize mm -hmm. it, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's something that they want to do. Mm -hmm. And when I was in the lifestyle, I did the same thing. thing. Listen, you would be crazy not to fully represent something that you stand strong and mm -hmm. you believe in, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When I was in it, I stood strong as DJ. Mm -hmm. You know, couldn't nobody take that away from me. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. Listen, I don't care nothing about them was telling me about God, telling me about, you know, God said it's okay to do that. Look. My mother had went and got her life together, and she would come and try to tell me about, now, Denise, you see what God done for me? I said, he done that for you. <laughs> yes, yeah, she said it. I said, he done that for you. Yes. But when God, because I had a praying mother, mm -hmm. and then she pulled some of the mm -hmm. other saints, and they began to mm -hmm. start to pray, mm -hmm. God began to deal with me. Mm -hmm. And I said, listen, I'm living like this. I'm tired of living like this. I know it got to be a better way. And I went and I heard about the better way. Mm. And I'm here to tell you, listen, it was a struggle yes, for me to yes. change. See, I had to learn how to live as a woman. Mm. So I had to learn how to unban the 
unband my breasts mm. and put the bras on. Mm. I had to learn how to take off the men through the balloons and the boxers mm. and begin to put on the women the women underwear. Mm. I had to learn how to put on stockings. Mm. I had to learn how to put on this skirt, mm. this sweater. Mm. I had to learn how to allow my hair to grow. Mm -hmm. I had to learn for God to teach me how to begin to walk and act like a lady. Mm -hmm. The same way I learned how to be a male. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was the same transition that I had to go through. And trust me, it was uncomfortable. I felt like I was a queen mm -hmm. because I had lived as a man for so long. Really? But one of the most beautiful things that helped me to go in my, trans my, my transition was when I came and I saw my mother looking like this woman that I had always longed for was to see my mother looking like a woman because mm -hmm. I reflected mm -hmm. that back when I first mm -hmm. moved with her, mm -hmm. that this was my mother. Mm -hmm. And to see my mother looking like a woman and she going up and down the aisle praising God and I saw this, I'm like, if there's hope for my mother, there's hope for me. Hmm. If she did it, well, I seen her dressing and living like this hardcore pimp, mm -hmm. you know, wearing the stacked shoes mm -hmm. and the big walls of mm -hmm. money, driving in the Cadillacs. Mm -hmm. I saw these things. This was mm -hmm. not just TV. Mm -hmm. I saw these things. Mm -hmm. I saw her laying in the bed with two and three women. Mm -hmm. I saw her in her acts. Even when she didn't know that I saw her mm -hmm. in her acts, mm -hmm. I saw her. Mm -hmm. And to be able to see what God had done for her mm -hmm. in her life, mm -hmm. and I was longing for it, asking mm -hmm. how can I be free? Mm -hmm. And God did that thing for me. Hallelujah. I'm like, Lord Jesus. And when I made a vow, Lord, you get me out of this. <laughs> I promise you, I'll never go back. Mm. And I want to say this, Zelda. I see women that look good. Mm. Look good. Mm. I see men that look good. We have conversations. Mother, did you see that? Girl, we free to talk about it, ain't we? Free it? to talk about it. <laughs> I seen what you seen. <laughs> we see the same thing. Yeah. But we're able to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I don't have a, listen, I see women that look good. I see men that look good. That's right. But I don't have a desire. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. That's I don't have a desire yes. to go to bed with no woman. That's right. to be in the comfort zone of a wimp mm -hmm. uh, and a woman mm -hmm. I listen I go to various pr prisons and I minister and just this last time that I, I was at the prison I was speaking about how God had cleaned me up and how I was just so low down you know how my mouth I mean I was just low down and I began to just talk about some of the acts and one of the questions came up where the young lady said so are you trying to tell me there's something wrong with oral sex I said, I'm going to better yet let you answer that question. I said, now we all know that oral sex feel good. Listen, it makes, a turn, it makes us turn flips. We climb walls. Mm -hmm. I said, we do everything. We holler, ooh, we grab heads, mm -hmm. we hold neck, mm -hmm. we squeeze ears, we slap them together. <laughs> you know, I said, listen, we do all that. I said, yes, oral sex does all that. Ain't no sex does all that. I said, but here's the thing that I had to learn. And I'm going to ask you a question. I said, and maybe Zelda, you might answer this question for the, instead of the woman. Now, will you take your face and go put it inside of a toilet stool and run your tongue around uh -uh. that ball? Why wouldn't you? Uh -uh. Why, wouldn't you? Uh -uh. why wouldn't you do that? Why would I? No, why wouldn't you? Because it's nasty. So what's nasty about it? It don't, well, I can't see it don't taste good because I've never done it, but it don't <laughs> appear to taste good. It don't appear to taste good. It don't good. appear to Why taste good. Why it doesn't appear to taste good? It's not appealing. So it's not appealing. Mm. So the same things that go inside of a toilet stool is what? Bowel movement, mm -hmm. urine, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. All those things mm -hmm. go inside of a toilet mm -hmm. stool. So when I'm sticking my tongue in somebody's anal, what am I doing? Is I'm that, eating the same thing that's in the toilet. You sure are. So when I'm licking and lapping on somebody's vagina, mm -hmm. The same thing that goes in the toilet, the mm -hmm. waste that's coming from mm -hmm. the body, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I'm putting my mouth on it. Mm. That same stuff is going down in my yes. system. Yes. Some people walk around with the breath so bad and so terrible and they don't even know why. They don't realize. Yeah. Um, don't even realize. Listen, yeah. if I listen, I got defecation sitting down in the bottom of my stomach. Mm -hmm, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, I got mm -hmm, semen sitting down mm -hmm, in the bottom of my stomach. Mm -hmm. So listen, I'm grateful to be in a deliverance ministry mm -hmm. and that has taught me that I may be able to tell somebody mm -hmm, else mm -hmm. because why? Somebody else is waiting to be delivered and set mm -hmm. free as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, See, and when I learned about doing that, Zelda, and learned that my mouth, see, when I was faced with 60 years in prison, right? When I was faced with, when I went through that window and had 103 stitches, I didn't know nothing about calling on God for nothing. his help. All I used to say was, Lord, if you spare my life, I'll live for you, right? But see, now when the thoughts of women come, when the thoughts of drugs come, when the thoughts of all sex come, because you got to keep in mind, I program that stuff in my flesh, right? Mm -hmm. So when those thoughts come, I know how to get down on my knees and say, mm -hmm. Father, mm -hmm. in the name mm -hmm. of Jesus, mm -hmm. lift this spirit. Mm -hmm. Father, mm -hmm. keep me. I know how to wake up in the morning time and say, Lord, I thank you that I'm not laying in the bed with some woman. Mm -hmm. I thank mm -hmm. you that I'm not laying in the bed with some woman. Mm -hmm. Lord, I thank you that I don't have a needle stuck in my breast. Mm -hmm. I thank you that I'm out the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I thank you that I'm not sticking. That's what my mouth is made for. Mm -hmm. See, Hallelujah. but when I got some other stuff going down in there, mm -hmm. I got some oil sex that's blocking yeah. me from getting to God. Mm -hmm. I got some anal sex that's blocking me from getting from God. Mm -hmm. But see, when I repented of my sins mm -hmm. and asked him to come into my life and clean me up, mm -hmm. then I can be able to say, Lord. Mm. See, if I get sick, my mother can go and she can pray. Had my mother stayed in the lifestyle, mm -hmm. she couldn't pray to get mm -hmm. me out of the mm -hmm. lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So guess what we do? We can stay before God on our knees and mm -hmm. we can say, Lord, That's prepare right. us. Mm -hmm. Send us to tell That's somebody right. Right. that you set man free. That's right. And we mm -hmm. got the keys of life. We got the keys. We're able to give this to somebody to be set free. That's true. Awesome. Hallelujah. Yeah, that is good. Oh, wow. This is phenomenal. I just know, I just feel the spirit in this room. And I know that all that you are saying is from the heart. Mm -hmm. And that which you are seeing, you are touching somebody else's heart because we need to hear this. These are things that we just don't talk about in the black community because it's taboo. Oh, mm -hmm. You just don't, you just don't talk about it. That's why the cycle continues. It continues. But you are here and you have broken that cycle. You are living proof. Yes, certainly. That that no longer exists. Before we go, I must ask you this question because Chicago has elected a new mayor. Lori Lightfoot. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole lot of hoopla around the fact that she is a woman mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. living as a man. Right. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about that? Well, I don't have any thoughts about that because one thing about it is that I know that God and is, it no is And is it helping? So... I have no thoughts about that. I don't know what the future might hold and what she might do. She just she just got in office. Mm -hmm. But I can say that anyone that gets into positions, they only get there because God allows mm -hmm. them to be there. Mm -hmm. And and it's always for a purpose. The mm -hmm. same way that he can raise you up and let you up mm -hmm. is the same way that he can bring mm -hmm. you down. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what the outcome of that might be. Mm -hmm. But I just know that I'm believing God to open up some doors. Because mm -hmm. listen, the same thing I'm talking about, <laughs> look, she needed and everybody else right. needed. Right. You know, so, but I'm not against, and I, I want to certainly state this, that I am not against any person that is in the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. That same love that was applied to me mm -hmm. when we were in the lifestyle right. is the same love that we want to give back. Mm -hmm. We make ourselves available that we just a phone call away. Mm -hmm. You know, with, with social media now, we're not hard to be found. Nope. I'm, listen, I'm, I'm, I am all over right. Facebook. All right. and, and things that I talk about is giving people hope. Mm -hmm. And that's what this thing is all about for me is being able to give hope. Because every person, if they're expecting mm -hmm. to see the almighty God, mm -hmm. they're going to have to come by the steps come. that we came by. Yes, ma'am. And that is repenting of our sins. Yes, ma'am. And they are able to be in the same same shadows that we are in. Yes, ma'am. I applaud you and your mother for the work that you're doing in the community because one of the things during the course of our conversation is that I've never shared with anybody 
And I can't believe how we just go on the internet and just tell all our business. <laughs> to get out of bed, into the swing of things, well, don't worry, you are not alone. Join us for thought-provoking, stimulating, and mindful conversations on higher learning with Zelda Speaks for your Monday morning mindfulness session on Blog Talk Radio, The Female Solution, Mondays, 7.30 until 9 a.m. Be sure and send your ideas, thoughts, comments, and suggestions. Experience mindfulness moments with the Mindfulness Slash Stress Relief Coach, Zelda Speaks, and thanks for sharing the Mindfulness Moment tip of the day. Stay on purpose, stay empowered, and stay tuned to your next session of Mindfulness on Higher Learning with Zelda Speaks. Make it a mindful day, and thanks for listening. Hi, uh, my name is Kim Davis, and I'm just so excited to be a part of the 